This is the Augusta Westland Lynx, the world's fastest helicopter. Military helicopters like these rely on a battery of sensors and cameras, which need specialized protection. But on the battlefield, ordinary glass just won't cut it. In order to get glass this strong, you need to make it from sapphires. So, how do they do it? Sapphires are among the most highly prized gemstones. Their rarity means a natural sapphire the size of a pea can cost over $2,000. And even for a military helicopter, that's expensive protection. Thankfully, they've discovered a way to make synthetic sapphires. 50 miles south of Perth, on the edge of the Australian outback, lies the Huntley Mine, the world's largest bauxite mine. This mine produces over 22 million tons of bauxite ore a year. The ore goes to the nearby Pinjara refinery, where it is turned into white aluminum oxide powder, the raw material for making aluminum. But this unremarkable white powder has another more surprising property. If you heat it enough, it'll turn into sapphire. Most natural sapphires were formed millions of years ago, when intense heat and pressure turned small amounts of aluminum oxide into super tough gemstones. But a million years is a long time to wait for a piece of glass. So the powder is sent to the other side of the world, to Chicago, Illinois, where Rubicon technology can grow giant sapphires in just a week or two. They start by pouring up to 450 pounds of crystallized aluminum oxide, or alumina, into a furnace heated to 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit almost half the temperature of the surface of the sun. Next, a rod of sapphire known as the sea is lowered into the cauldron. In the heat of the furnace, the alumina melts. Then the operator very carefully begins to reduce the temperature in the furnace. As it cools, the molten liquid begins to crystallize around the sea. It can take 14 days for the sapphire to grow in this way. The resulting gem is an extraordinary crystal known as a boule that can weigh as much as 450 pounds. Amazingly, it's totally colorless because it's pure sapphire. Blue sapphires get their color from metal impurities like iron and chromium. This giant gem might not impress your girlfriend if you put it on the end of her finger, but it's a perfect building block for anything that needs super tough glass. Spinning at 1500 RPM, a drill bit with a diamond-coated tip carves its way through the sapphire, cutting cylinders out of the bool as though it were coring an apple until only a shell remains to be melted down and used again. But they don't stay this way for long. To make sections of perfectly clear glass, the sapphire core needs to be sliced into small slivers, called wafers. The task involves a very high degree of precision, as each wafer needs to be just one millimeter thick. So they use a steel wire the width of a human hair. Threaded across the core like a loom, the wire is capable of cutting 300 wafers simultaneously. The problem is, steel alone can't cut the sapphire. It would just overheat and snap. So an abrasive slurry filled with minute diamond particles is poured over the crystal. The wire is moved at 30 feet per second in a rocking motion across the surface of the cores. With the diamonds providing the cutting edge, the steel slices through the sapphire like a cheese cutter. 
which produces crystal clear sections that are used as glass panels for everything from watches to cameras. And before long, these sapphire glass panels will be available for high strength windshields. giving these military marvels even more protection from the extreme conditions on the battlefield.